Hey everyone, what's up? And welcome back to the Video Village. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to create some cinematic titles inside of DaVinci Resolve Studio Fusion. So in order to demonstrate this technique, I created a mock series opener called Reckoning Day. So let's go ahead and take a look and I'll be right back. Alright, so yeah, as you can see, the, the main idea behind this technique is to create a blur on randomly uh, throughout the letter so that the whole title starts off and it's, it's very out of focus, very blurry, and one by one the letters in random order start to come into focus until the whole title is there. And so I've seen this before many times in, in uh, movies and TV shows. It's a technique that's been around for a while, but it's still, what's really cool about it is that it's a simple technique, but when it's used well with other clips, it can be really, really effective. So the main focus of this tutorial is going to be on this particular element and how to create these titles because ultimately, if you like this technique or you feel it might be useful for something you're working on, you can apply it in any way that you see fit. But at the end of this tutorial, I will go ahead and I'll kind of take a look with you at some of the edits that I made and why I chose to make these edits and some of the techniques I used uh, also some of the sound design elements as well as some effects that I applied on these clips. All right, well with further ado, let's go ahead and jump over and start building this title. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is let's just go ahead and create a new timeline because I wanna start fresh and I just wanna isolate the titles and just demonstrate that uh, in a brand new uh, timeline. So let's go ahead and call this Fusion title timeline and I'm going to go ahead and turn this to 23976 uh, drop frame which is more of a film speed 24 you've heard it called 24p uh, usually drop frame for TV and even online it's 23976 and we're working in 1920 by 1080 that is HD and so we're gonna go ahead and create that. And now we have this clean timeline. Okay, so in order to start this whole process, the first, there's a few ways we can do this. So if we come over here to our effects tab and we go to our effects, you're gonna see up here, there's this thing called an adjustment clip and right over here is the fusion composition. And if we drag this onto our timeline, we immediately get a fusion composition, which basically means that we can build whatever effects or titles, anything that we might need inside of this composition. The other way we could do this if we close our effects tab is to come over here to our bin for tutorial and we right click and say new fusion composition. And if we click on that, it will give us a composition, a fusion composition, brand new right in here, which we can name. In fact, let's do that. Let's go fusion composition and let's call this cinematic titles. And we're gonna go ahead and match it to our timeline, which is 23,976. It's set at four seconds, but let's go ahead and make that 12 seconds. And we're gonna create it. Okay, and then let's go ahead and delete this one and then grab our cinematic titles one we just created and let's drop it in the timeline. All right, well, let's get started. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna jump into Fusion. 
Okay, so here we are inside of Fusion. This is the visual effects and compositing suite that is built into DaVinci Resolve. Now, this is a very different software package as compared to After Effects, which is layer-based. Fusion is actually node-based, and I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to create a title. This you always whenever you come into Fusion from scratch, you're going to end up with this media out node. And in the same way that in the color tab, we have nodes, it's a node based color space. We also have nodes to work with here in our compositor. And this is how we're going to get things put together. Again, it's quite a bit different than using layers but you'll start to get an idea for how it works as we go through this. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is, well, we need to create some text. So let's grab our text tool right here. We're gonna drag it down, and now we have a text node. And so by arming this little button, if you can see this here, um, this puts this particular node inside of this box. The other way to do that, if we turn that off, is to drag it in. So there's a couple ways to do that. Okay, so let's start over here. Let's go to our text box and let's create this text and we're gonna call this cinematic titles. All right. And let's pick another font. Uh, the one I used for this particular tutorial was, uh, let's see, where is it? Okay, yeah, here, Electrolyze. Just thought that was kind of cool. So in this tab, in this text inspector, we can do all sorts of things. We can uh, enlarge the size of the title. We can change the tracking, uh, line spacing. There's all sorts of things we can do with this. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna size this to about here and I'm gonna open the tracking just a little bit. So it's just a little bit more open space between the letters. Now. Let's take a look at this over here. So the media out is basically how you get everything that you're working on inside of Fusion to show up on your timeline when you come back out to edit. So what we're gonna, we're gonna wanna do is take our text and connect it to the media out. And now if we go to our edit tab, we have our title and it's showing up. So no matter what your composition is, everything ends up going downstream until it reaches the media out, and that's how we get a final result. Okay, so here we are in the title. So let's say we've set up our, our we like the size, we like the, the tracking, and all of these attributes can be animated with keyframes. So for instance, if I take this back to the beginning of the playhead here, and let's say we reset the tracking, we bring it down. If we make a keyframe, and then we come out to say, oh, 120 frames right here, and we move the tracking out, and it creates another keyframe. As you can see, we now have an animated title that's giving us a little bit of a tracking change, which is pretty cool. That would certainly be something you could do and again, do it very easily, a couple clicks and you're good to go. Okay, so we've got this set up, we've got a little animation and now we wanna create this fade on, blur on effect. So how do we do that? Well, you'll notice up here we have our tools and these are the tools for the basic title. But we've also got this tab here called modifiers. However, that is not armed yet and so we need to get that active. And the way we do that is we come into our text box, we right click, and we have some options here. And the one we're looking for today is called the follower. We're gonna click on that. And so now what you'll notice is this modifiers tab is now active. We now have some options in there. And this is where we're going to build the look. So. First thing we want to do is the timing. So this is basically going to tell Fusion in, in what sequence and what timing these titles are going to blur in or each letter is going to blur in. So the first thing we want to do is, is our range is going to be all characters. You could limit it if you wanted to. You could change that and make it you know, just a few characters within it, not do the whole thing. 
but for purposes of this we want to do all characters. The order, we're going to go ahead and say random but one by one. And you can do completely random. I mean, you could, you've could you got a lot of different options here, but for sake of this tutorial, let's just do random one by one. And then the delay, because you want a little bit of delay between each one. So as these come, as these come on, they just there's a little delay between each one. It just feels a bit more random. So we're going to leave that where it is. And then the delay time, we need to move this up. So let's move that up to, let's say, 2.4. Okay. So we've set up our our action here in terms of what the title's going to do. But now we need to apply some shading to get the effect. So we're gonna come over to our shading tab and again, there's a lot here to talk about and we'll do that in some upcoming tutorials. But the first thing we wanna do is come down here to softness and open that. Here's where we're gonna be creating this effect. So let's go back to the beginning of the composition. We're gonna go ahead and make a keyframe, two keyframes on the X and the Y. And we're gonna go ahead and arm both of those. And then we're gonna go ahead I'm gonna crank them all the way up, just crank them all the way up to 20. Okay. So that is our effect and we're done. And thank you for stopping by the video village. I'm kidding. Okay, we're not done. So as we move forward, let's go ahead and pick another keyframe. Now we've had this tracked out, it's tracking out and we've got this effect and this animation ends here. But let's go ahead and make the title sort of finalize and lock in at let's say, Oh, I don't know, maybe 70 frames. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull these down, these sliders down, and it will automatically generate another keyframe. And so what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna end up with a result where we have the titles blurring in randomly until they all settle. Okay. So again, this is, this is really the essence of the effect. And it, it's pretty simple. It's not a, a terribly complicated animation, but when used in the proper setting, this can be really, really effective. I found that over the years, sometimes when you have a lot of animation tools, it's easy to get carried away and have you know, titles flying in and letters dancing and all kinds of crazy stuff. And in some cases, that might be appropriate, but um, I have found, especially after having spent uh, many years in the advertising business and producing and editing TV commercials, sometimes and oftentimes simpler is a lot better. And this is a really, really nice look. It's very effective. And when you add some good music behind it and some sound design, it can make it really, really interesting. So the other thing you could add in this whole equation here, and the other thing we could add is a glow. So if we were to go back to our start, and let's say we made a keyframe for the glow, we could bring that up a little bit, and you kind of see it's getting a little bit more intense, and then go back out to our final keyframe that we finished uh, where we stopped the animation. And again, keep in mind there was a little delay. It was about a, a 2.4 second delay, and so that's why we have a little bit of, of uh, ending there. It kind of goes past the keyframe. But let's go ahead and bring that glow down. Okay, so now we have a glow as well as this blur that takes place. So again, just something else you could add into the mix. This is like a great toolbox. You have so many options. There's so much that you can do inside of Fusion. And this is where things can get really, really interesting and you can be extremely creative. So let's go back to our Tools tab and this is where we started. Okay, so now if we come out of this, and again, we're connected to our Media Out. So if we go back to our Edit tab, guess what? There's our title. And so you can see that's exactly what we animated. There are the titles and they're coming on screen. And that looks really, really good. So if we want to put this over some footage, it's very easy to do. We simply put it on top of something else. Let's go ahead and grab, oh, let's grab this airplane clip. This is a uh, stock footage I got from Motion Array. 
And uh, as you can see, the title has a built-in alpha channel, and so it just fits right on top of the clip. And if you want to change the position, you know, well, that's too high. We want maybe it at the bottom of the frame. That's very easy to do as well. We can click on the fusion composition, go over to our inspector, and here we have some transform options. So we can make it smaller and we can even change the position. In fact, if we go here to the transform tab, there's a little button here for transform and that'll allow you to take the title and just freely move it anywhere you want. So you could take it and you can position it, center it up, maybe grow it a little bit more. We can just put it down there and then so any changes we want to make to the title, we can always go back to Fusion, to our text node, and we can adjust, maybe we want to adjust the delay uh, of the effect. Maybe we want these letters to be uh, completely in focus a little bit sooner. So we can always push the delay back and you'll see that that will, that will bring the letters more in focus and that'll change the timing a little bit. And you might want it longer. Maybe you want it to last just a little bit longer and it's just going to kind of settle in at the last second. Um, it's really up to you, but again, this is the essence of the main technique and how to get these titles. Now, there is a lot to cover in Fusion. Um, this is just one simple technique. With all of these tools that you have at your disposal, the shading tools, the animation tools, the modifiers, uh, there are just so many different things you could do inside of Fusion. And that, what's so amazing about this is that, again, this is all integrated directly into DaVinci Resolve. It's all here in this ecosystem. And um, it makes it incredibly efficient when you're editing to be able to produce everything inside of one application rather than having to jump around to different applications. And I'm really determined to learn a lot more about Fusion and the node-based workflow because I'm so used to Adobe After Effects. I'm so used to layers. I've been doing it for 15 years in After Effects. I, I know where everything is. I can do it very quickly. In Fusion, it's taken me a bit more time to figure out how to do all this. So like you, I'm going to be learning a lot as well inside of Fusion. And what I do learn, I will be more than happy to share with you. In fact, while we're here, let me just show you one quick thing here. So let's say you wanted a background here. Let's just say for whatever reason, you weren't gonna put this over uh, a video, but you wanted something like maybe some color or something in the background. How do you do that? Well, here's where it gets kind of interesting. So we have a text layer, but we wanna put something underneath it. How do we do that? So the way we do that is we use this thing called a merge node. And so we're going to go ahead and click on that. And now we have a merge node. So what you'll notice about this is that there are, there are several inputs here. There's one for the background. And if you hold your mouse over it, one for the foreground. And then this blue one is for a mask. So if you were... Uh, doing rotoscoping, and you're creating a mask. It would go, it would plug into that part of the node. But in this case, we've got our foreground and our background, and so the text we want to be on the top. So let's take our node end and let's plug it into the foreground. And so now it's plugged into the foreground, and we can add something to the background. And so let's take. Um, well, let's take a background node and drag that out. And there it is. And let's make the color. Oh, let's choose a new color. Let's make it. Um, oh, let's pick a color from the crayon box. Let's call it that. OK. So as of right now, we're not seeing anything. Nothing's happening. Here's our media out. Here's our text. Here's our merge node. But our media out, we're not we're not getting anything. So what's what's going on here? Well, we need to connect the background to the background plug inside of the merge node. And so by doing that, now we have our background. And oh boy, is that bright. Yeah, that doesn't look right. Let's let's go to a much darker. Uh, let's just go down to like a gray, an iron 
there we go. Okay. So just for, again, for purposes of this demonstration, it's just, you know, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't use a background like that, but it's just a show. So basically here's how it's set up. We have our text and we have our background and we are using a merge node to put those two together in a particular order. So the text is on top, the background is on the bottom and both, all of those things are traveling downriver to our media output, where if we go back to our edit tab, there it is. So let's talk about the edit for a minute. And um, as I'm looking at this timeline, I'm realizing it looks a little bit sloppy. So please forgive me for that. Um, <laughs> if I was doing this for a client or a project, I would spend some extra time and clean this all up. But, uh, but I just wanted to get this thing done and use this as a demonstration uh, for these titles. But let's go ahead and jump in and take a look. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of these clips. So everything that you saw in this, in this trailer was all stock footage, everything. You know, I was, I was starting with this concept of this fictitious title opener, and it's like maybe this is a dystopian series and uh, it's on Netflix or it's on Amazon or whatever, and we're creating the opening titles. And so I strung together some images that I thought were interesting. So this already has a very interesting color cast to it, and it's kind of sci-fi dystopian, the blues and the deep reds here in the, in, the, in the shadows. It's just got nice color contrast, kind of eerie looking. And then um, I grabbed these ink drops. So these are just clips of ink drops. And what I did was, just a very simple, very quick cut between the original color, which was an orange, to a sort of a bluish white. And then the other thing I did was I added, if you look here and we go to the inspector, I added a prism blur to just kind of make it a little bit off, like take the edges. And so if you turn that off, you kind of see it comes back in, but if with the prism blur, it just adds a little bit of that haloing and little distortion, just makes it a little bit more interesting, like, hey, what's going on there? So again, that's literally, let's see, this first cut is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 frames, and then we cut, and this is probably about 12 frames. So it's very quick, it's a very quick edit, and it just happens and then we're on to the next shot. And I've also, to match that, I've got some sound design. So I've got a whoosh, and I've also got a glitch sound, like a little, it's like a little flutter. And this is where too, when you're editing your projects, really think about sound design and how to add those little touches, those little nuances in the sound can really make a huge impact on your edit. So. Um, all of these sounds to these sound design elements I got off of Motion Array. It's honestly, it's a really great um, stock footage and stock sound and music library. Even the music I got was from Motion Array. Um, they really got some good stuff. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. They have no idea who I am. Um, I've said that before, I'm a nobody, but um, I do enjoy using their elements and I think they're, they're pretty darn good. Um, same thing over here with this cut. I have an ink blot, but it could be a cell organism. I mean, you don't really know, right? And again, I've got some quick cuts here. This is probably about six frames. And then suddenly we're, we're, we jump cut ahead and it's more developed and it happens just with one cut. Again, adding a whoosh and adding some technology, uh, technology infographic sounds, a little chitter, a little chatter, a little mechanical. You're not really sure what it is, but it sounds kind of eerie. And on the very last title, I went ahead and used a light leak in the background behind it just to create sort of this strange aura as, uh, as the title is resolving to the very, very final frame before it ends. And again, it's just a touch. It's just a slight touch. Um, that I found it's almost like a, a lightning effect. I added a few of these underneath. Uh, if you can see these right here, so these light leaks, so they just kind of come on and you just get a little pop, like, is it lightning? Is it something? I added a little thunder sweep in there to make it sound like maybe that's what it is. And again, it's interesting what you can create with stock footage when you have an idea and a thread and you kind of put images together and elements together to create 
an effect or even a storyline. All right, well, I think that's gonna do it for me today. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. I hope that uh, by using this technique, you might be able to come up with some creative designs in your own titles. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, please feel free to leave them down below. And until next time, I will see you back here at the Video Village.